So here we have the Jaguar XE R Sport on a 68 plate. So I'm going to start off firstly by showing you around the exterior of the car. And then we'll hop in and run through some controls on the inside of it. Uh, from the exterior, you can see it's a four-door car with alloy wheels. We're going to start off inside the boot space, first of all. As we approach the back of the car, you can see we have reversing sensors and plenty of boot space available as well. Okay, so we're just going to work our way back around to the front of the car. And then we'll hop in and run through just a few of the controls on the inside of it from there. Just briefly before we climb in, I think it's well worth seeing the interior from this exterior point of view. There's plenty to run through on the dashboard, so let's hop in and we'll do that now. Okay, now that we're inside the car, we're going to start with the dials first of all. Over on the left-hand side, we have the speedometer. We have the rev counter on the right-hand side. In the centre, the cool and temperature gauge, the fuel gauge. Uh, at the very bottom of that section, you'll find the total miles for the car. Uh, in the case of this vehicle, they are 39,140. To the right-hand side of that, it will show you what gear we're in. This car's an automatic, so of course we're in park at the moment. At the top of this section, you can see a digital readout for the speedometer. And dead center is uh, the main, at the moment, audio uh, menu that's being displayed there. You can change uh, the information that's displayed in that section, should you wish to. Uh, by using buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, the buttons in question are just here. We've got our stereo controls, phone controls, over on the right-hand side, cruise control and speed limiter as well. Behind the steering wheel, the minus paddle and plus paddle so that you can change up and down the gear manually with this automatic gearbox. And then over into the center, the main touch screen for the car. So we are on the home screen at the moment, which can be accessed by pressing the home button. Whichever screen you go into, you can go back a page by hitting this button. You can scroll through the home screen just like this. Uh, the main things that you would, generally speaking, want are navigation, your media, and your phone. They are all there, and then you've got separate, probably lesser used options on the following screens. You can access these directly down the bottom here as well. So satellite navigation, phone, media, and, which is where we're gonna start, your heated seats. So you can turn on uh, the passenger heated seat and driver heated seat. There are three different heat settings, as you can see, or you can just turn them straight back off again. Uh, next panel along is your audio options. Uh, so we, of course, have the uh, radio, DAB, FM, and AM. Once you paired your phone, you'll be able to stream your music wirelessly via Bluetooth audio as well. Pairing your phone is done by hitting the phone button, then pair new device and follow the instructions on screen from there. And of course, we have satellite navigation as well. Really nice, clear, extra wide uh, display, as you can see. Uh, very easy system to use. Ultimately, you can uh, get to your various different menus from here. You can change from 3D to 2D, for example. And of course, you can navigate using the options and panels over to this right-hand side just here. Below that, we have the dual zone climate control. You can adjust your passenger temperature, which you'll see displayed here, your driver temperature. You can increase and decrease the fan speed. You can determine what direction you'd like the air to be distributed in. That shows up on this main screen just here. Once you're happy with those settings, rear conditioning is on at the minute, so that's off. Back on again, or you could just hit auto. The car will now take full control of the fan speed and the direction of the air to maintain the temperatures that you've asked for. Any manual adjustment will override that straight away and allow you to put it back on your own settings. You can uh, open up the heated seat menu from here as well as on the main screen itself. We have the volume for your stereo. This button starts and stops the engine. You simply need to make sure that the key is inside the vehicle with you. So for example, uh, we have the key just here for the car. As long as it's in the vehicle, press this button, you'll be able to start uh, and stop the engine from there. This dial is essentially what would be your gear lever for the car. So we're in park at the moment. We have reverse, neutral, drive, and if you push it down and twist, sport as well. With the car in reverse, you can see that this car has a full color reversing camera with guidelines that show you what direction the car is headed in in relation to the image that's being shown on the screen. And when you turn the engine off, this will lower down so that it sits flush to this unit in the center here. You can turn your stop and start on and off from here. You can turn your traction control on and off and change the driving setup of the car. So it's in its kind of normal mode at the moment. You have your track, normal, eco, and then your ice and snow option. Most of the time, of course, should be just here. We then have an electronic handbrake and a couple of cup holders here as well. All that leaves me to say is thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you'd like to come and see the car for yourself and have a test drive, please feel free to give us a call here at Surrey Specialist Cars. We'd love to hear from you soon.